All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is JD. I just wanted to show you um, the schematic and uh, kind of the, the inner workings of this cassette delay that I've made. Give you a kind of a, this is my proto prototype here. Um, okay, let's go through the schematic and I'll kind of try to explain everything. This is just going to be a first video in a series I'm, I want to make on how to make one of these. I wanted to, to uh, make this for, you know, an absolute beginner um, I, like me. Um, I just stumbled upon this idea in my brain and I thought, you know, let's, let's go for it. I've had a space echo in the past and uh, I love the sound of delay with dub music and, you know, rockabilly, everything. Uh, there's delay in everything and it's so cool. And tape delay is just, it's such a cool sounding uh, thing. And this is just a really fun novel way to do it instead of using Bucket Brigade or whatever, you know. This is, it's just all analog. You hear that tape saturation, you hear the tape hiss. I don't know, there's something special about cassette delay. Anyway, here we go. Let's try to explain all this here. Um, I, I've never used a schematic maker, so this is, I, I probably don't have this set up very pretty. But anyway, just to get my idea out here. Um, so let's see, here's the input here. Let me just kind of go real basic overview here. And I have this, um, I'll, I'll, you know, share this with everybody. And that's another thing. I want to not just make it, you know, accessible for beginners um, to do this because it isn't that hard of a, of a, uh, of a thing, you know, but I want to make it completely open source. I want to share all this. Um, I want, uh, you know, I, this needs to be out there. I think, I think, I think I made a pretty cool thing and, um, I know that there can be improvements to it too. So that's kind of why I want to, you know, <laughs> keep it out there. I mean, I've been told I could make these in a pretty enclosure and sell them for a whole bunch of money, but I mean, it's just a lot of work and I'm lazy. So let's, you know, anyway, that's my thing. So anyway, some basic parts here. Um, the inputs here from the, you know, the signal input. You have three potentiometers. Potentiometers are variable resistors. The, those are the knobs. Those are the potentiometers here. Okay, they just adjust the loudness of certain things, or in this case, the speed. So anyway, you have um, the dry signal is the signal straight from your instrument that isn't affected by the tape yet. It comes in and it gets split and it goes to the output. So then you just have a nice clean signal going to that. With this switch here, you can turn that dry signal off. So you can just, just only have the, what we call the wet signal coming out of the uh, tape head, the, the, excuse me, the play head. And what we have here is just a, a you know, let, let me kind of explain on here maybe. Explain how it works, this part here. So this is the original record and play head on this cheap cassette player, a recorder. The special thing about this is that it has it, it doesn't, it's not just like a Walkman where it just plays cassettes. It records. So you need this. This is a requirement, a recording one, you know, record. And it also has to have an input, like a mic right here. So you can plug in a little microphone and dictate, you know, the uh, things. So with that, um, okay, so I added this one in here. This is not original to the, to the component. It's a little play. It's a, it's just a duplicate of this that I bought. I bought two of these. So that's that we're going to talk about that. The cost of all this. Um, I, I working on this, I broke one. So I just, you know, I, I blew up the amplifier in it somehow. So I just harvested it. So this is the little playhead, and I just screwed it in right here to that. And I'll get in detail with this, you know, later on in a different video. And then this is the wire coming from it. It just goes into the electronics. Okay. And then you have this modified cassette tape here. And this is a tensioner bar. Check it out. This, where does this come from? <laughs> here. <laughs> it goes underneath. This is what the record and uh, play head, the record head sits on and moves. Uh, you know, it moves it. Okay. So when you take out the head, uh, if you do that, well, like I did, and get the head out of the, out of another one, you can steal that too. This, this little rubber thing and see what it does is it just pushes the tape against the tape on the bottom side there. Okay. So I just drilled a hole, put in a screw and check it out. It's a tension. Oh, it's kind of hard to see 
here is the tape right here, G -g 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 -g, right there. The actual tape coming across hits the record head and gets record, okay, erased, recorded. Then it the sound signal travels along here and gets played back here through these wires. And that's what we're, this is what the major part of this. We, we added an amplifier to that. And here's the pinch roller right here. So I cut out all this on a cassette and then I screwed a little hole, put in a screw, and now I have a tension lever. Check it out. So then when I hit record play, look at the tape in there. See how it just pushes right up against, well that's terrible lighting, right up against the playhead of varying degrees of tension. And you can hear it when it's playing, you just go right there, it gets this really good, strong, good signal. And that's another thing, I wanted to talk about that signal. The The point of this thing is not to make a just a tweaky, soundy, you know, rough, uh, saturated, uh, um, special effect pedal. I wanted this to be really, really clean and good sounding. So anyway, that's how that works. Um, so the signal from that goes under here and comes in here. So here's what we have on the underside here. The potentiometers I was talking about. No, this is just an extra ground wire. Just ignore that. So we have our speed. The speed one comes right from the um, from the cassette player itself. We'll take apart the back, and we'll add. Uh, there's there's already one of these knobs in or uh, potentiometers inside this. So what we're doing is we're going to rip that out and add our own. So we don't have to do any additional electronics. We're just soldering in a new one to where you know where it was on the original cassette player. That's that. See, so yeah, it's just it doesn't touch anything else. It just goes right to the cassette. Here is our. Let's see. Let's go from here, this side. So our dry signal, wet signal, and then this is the feedback circuit right here. Okay. So you got dry, turn it that up and down, wet, and then you have. So it's just like a kind of a single um, uh, echo. And then this one's a feedback. So this one will just feed that signal back into itself over and over and over. It feeds it back to that rec uh, record head. So it just goes rrr, 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 and gets uh, feedback. It's really fun. So you can just turn that off if you don't want to, or you could make it really glitchy and awesome. Okay, this thing is really cool. I don't know how to do electronics and stuff, but I saw somebody making like um, uh, like distortion pedals on YouTube and he was using these. He was just, just, just you know, over overdriving this thing. So these are a buck on Amazon. You usually have to buy 10 of them at the same time. LM386. And I hear, you know, there's, these aren't the best little amplifiers, but this one works. So it's a dollar. So, oh yeah, ignore my crappy prototype soldering too. I was just in a hurry. <laughs> um, so there might be better modules for that or, you know, you could make all this from scratch. That's what a lot of people do. Like online, you'll see these LM386. Here's my here's my amplifier schematic. How did I do? And it's like, it's all these little resistors and everything that they did themselves. Anyway, I like this. It's $1. It's easy, quick and easy. And look, check it out. You even have little pins that you can use where you don't solder. It's kind of neat. We'll talk about that. Then on the back here, these screw in right here. These are the out, this is the output. Screw, screw. You just the wires screw in there, so you don't even have to solder this part. But I did on the bottom, just to have a good connection. Here's a potentiometer on this thing. This is a gain control for this, so you can turn that down to zero. You, I, you dial it in. This is probably like at ninety percent for me, or whatever. Just that's just kind of where it sounded the best for me. So you could overdrive that too if you want to, and and rip that off and solder in a new one and have another control for for um, the input gain into that. Okay. But I just leave it because I, I I did that, you know, mod. But then I'm like I just kept it up all the way anyway, so it didn't it didn't matter to me. Nine volt battery, and you can you know you can make it a nine volt battery system. I just did it because I was getting some noise in the prototype phase with the you know with the wall socket. So um, let's see. And then here's a little switch, the back of the switch right there, kind of hard to see. That's for the uh, cutting off the dry signal, so you only hear the wet. 
And then here is a little bit of a mixer um, that we made here. So this mixes together everything so that you don't have overlapping signals going, uh, you know, messing up each other. It's kind of hard to explain, but it just isolates all the sounds. And that's really simple. You know, it goes through at a capacitor resistor and then out to either the output or whatever. And then here's just a fancy on button. And then here, mirror. When you turn it off, that's a um, oh, shoot. What's that called? Um, the like uh, I can't remember the name. <laughs> um, you know what I'm talking about. It sends a signal right from the guitar or whatever right back out. So it, you're bypassing it. Yeah, bypass. True bypass. There you go. So anyway, let's look at the schematic here. I'll show you how everything's oriented. So let's see if I can explain it. Here's the little module. One dollar. Okay, so let's see here. So input here, dry signal, it goes right to that potentiometer, gets split to the output signal right there, dry, or it goes to the cassette head right here. This is representing the white, you know, the cassette player right here. All we're using is the input to that, the little mic input. So I soldered that right to the mic input. You could also just use the socket on the side. You know, you don't have to do that. You could have a little plug and plug it in. I just wanted to make it fancy. And then here's the speed control that's just in, you know, on the back side of the of the uh, of the cassette player. Okay, so that's that's that. Um, let's see. Then that signal also goes back to a reverb circuit. No wait. A reverb circuit. What am I talking about? <laughs> Feedback circuit. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it goes. Okay, yeah. No, never mind. Never mind. So it goes there. It goes there. Um, let's talk about the wet signal. Um, so the wet signal is derived from this. Here's the playhead. So that tape is coming through. It gets recorded here, right? The tape comes through and plays here. So we're just amplifying this amplified right here it comes out here and then goes to the feedback circuit here and makes a loop you know and let's see how that just goes let's see the feedback <laughs> I'm not very good at my own schematics anyway it's oh yeah it goes back to here here's the input to the <laughs> that's right <laughs> what am I talking about okay so yeah, the feedback is just a loop right here and you can just turn that up and down or off, you know. Then the wet signal also comes to the wet circuit right here. So it just comes to this potentiometer, comes back through here and out. And then this is just the power. This could be a nine volt battery. And this is a special switch to get that direct, uh, what's it that we decided on? <laughs> direct bypass. And then, or, so direct bypass or just see the dry signal comes through here dry bypass right there, or, you know, uh, true bypass out. Um, or when you turn it on, it powers the module. That's it. That's really it. It's simple and it's, I hope it works uh, for you. This totally works for me. I, uh, you know, uh, as far as the values of these resistors, I, Every like DIY passive re uh, uh, mixer that I found online, they all have like these 1K resistors and that just kills the level of the signal. So I opted to put in really small ones and just, just to get a really strong signal. So that's, you know, these, I didn't write uh, values in here cause that can be changed. You know, same with this, the capacitors. I can't remember what these are for their filters or what, I don't know. But anyway, when you have, see a mixer online, it's like put one in here, put one here and then amplify it. And then you got a mixer. So, you know what I mean? We need a mixer so that we can add these all together. You know what I mean? Without the signal going back in the wrong way. Anyway, quick little uh, explanation here and I'll get working on uh, taking this thing apart and uh, showing you guys uh, more details. And we'll start from the beginning and um, to make one of these. So, all right, cheers, take care, um, you know, let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions or, you know, anything to fix. Because, I mean, hey, I'm in a prototype phase still. We can make this better. So, anyway, cheers.